Good morning, Toronto City Church, or good afternoon, or good evening, or good night, no matter what time you choose to watch this. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for taking the time to listen. Um, if you hadn't taken the time, this is day two on, on our mini-series on, on, on our talk on trials and tribulations. Um, if you hadn't taken the time to listen, you haven't taken the time to listen to yesterday's, to Monday's video, please do so as I will be building on top of what we talked about yesterday so let me pray and then we'll dive right into our topic so father god thank you so much for um yeah thank you for everyone that is under the sound of my voice god and god i ask lord that you would help us um just navigate your word well, God, that you would help me teach you simply, Father. Um, Holy Spirit, I thank you, Lord, that you are um, going to land on the hearts, Father, of everyone that needs to, to hear this, Father, in the way that you need to, to land on their heart. God, thank you so much for the seed and the power of your word, that it will bear much fruit in the lives, Father, of everyone that is that is watching this, that is listening to this. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. So on day two, I want to talk to us about God's promise in the middle of trial and tribulation. So what is God's part in the middle of it? You know, I mean, we talked about last year, yesterday, we talked about what we need to do in suffering. So which is our part. So we said, hey, don't be surprised. Count it all joy and don't quit. But in the middle of it, there is God's part because we know that God is good. And where is God? So I, the question often is, yo, where is God in the middle of the trial and tribulation? Where is God in the middle of my hardship? And sometimes we feel like God is so far, God is distant, God is silent. He isn't there. He doesn't care. But that is not the truth. God has a part and he has a promise of, of, of he had, he promises us something as we go through trials and tribulations. So let's turn our Bibles. Let's turn to second Corinthians one verse three. It says this praise be to God, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of compassion and the God of all comfort who comfort us, comforts us in all of our trouble. Not some, not just a little bit, but in all of our troubles. So that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Man, so praise be to God, the Father, Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our troubles so we can comfort those in any trouble and the comfort and then we comfort, sorry, with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. So God's promise is that as we go through trials and tribulation, he will be the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all all of our troubles, not in not in some of our troubles, but in all of our troubles. I want to tell you guys a story. Because of certain circumstances in my life, I had found myself in a really, really dark night of the soul. So I was about 12, um, 13, and I had gone through, um, it would have been, I think, five, five years. So from about eight to 13, I had gone through some really, really, um, really really serious and 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 traumatic tra traumatic events in my life so there were some abuses some um some abandonment some rejection some like some serious serious stuff so by the time i hit 12 13 um i was determined to take my life i was determined to just commit suicide and to say you know what <laughs> forget it it was really 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 hard so um, I remember being young and making that decision and going to the kitchen and taking a knife and saying, okay, today I'm going to, I'm going to take my life, my life, and I'm going to stab myself. I'm going to die, um, cut myself and I'm just, just going to die. Cause I just couldn't take it. It was a really dark night of the soul. And I thought to myself, you know what? Dying is better than living. So this was like day one, I did it. And as I was, as I would do it, as I would make the decision to do it, not do it, because I'm still alive, praise God. As I would make the decision to do it, I would go to my room, sit on my bed, and I would cry myself to sleep. And I would cry so hard, I would fall asleep. Like I said, cry myself to sleep. I would wake up the next day and like the knife away from my body and then a little bit more strength to live. And then at night, I would do the same thing over and over again. And this went on for a period of what felt like a week and a half, two weeks, 
where I was just determined to take my life, but it would just never happen. And I was like, okay, never really thought of anything about it. Um, ended up getting out of the situation that I was in. And obviously the Lord um, rescued me out of it and I got out of it. Um, fast forward seven years and I am in a ministry context where they're ministering to me. And, you know, like I, I, I you know, tell, tell the environment. So this is actually at CWL. It was at an encounter. And I talk about how, you know, my past and, you know, there's a pre-encounter. We talked about what we had gone through and I, I talked about all, all the stuff. So in a ministry session, um, I don't remember who it was, but they shared a verse with me. And it was this verse. It was Psalm 56, verse 8. And it says this, you keep track of all of my sorrows and you've collected all of my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. And as I share the verse, I kid you not, I instantly went into, um, got caught up almost like in a vision. And, and, and in this vision, I saw myself as a young boy, 12, 13, and I'm on the bed, on my bed, I, I, I can still see on the, on the bunk bed where I was, I thought in the bottom half, crying, bawling my eyes out with the knife. But this time around, I wasn't alone. And I saw Jesus holding me like a mother will hold a baby and just caressing my head and telling me that I was going to be all right. And I kid you not, I looked to the side in this vision, still remember it, and I saw, as the word says, and I saw this bottle where he collected all of my tears. And for every tear that I cried, he also shed a tear. And I saw him whispering in my ear, hear him be like, it's going to be all right, Samuel. I promise if you hang on, it's going to be all right. And I was a mess. And even as I'm recounting the story, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm on the verge of tears. And I was a mess because I believe that I was, as I was going through that hard and dark night of the soul, that I was alone and that I had no one, that no one saw me, that God didn't really care. But little did I know that we, or I have a, I have a God who caught every tear that I cried in the bottle. And the word says that he wrote down, he recorded each one in this book and that he kept track of all of my sorrow and the knowledge of having a God who was present in my very, in the darkest time, in the darkest night of my soul brought me comfort. I was like, oh my goodness, God, in my pain, in my hardship, God, you were there to comfort me. You did not leave me alone. You did not leave me alone to have to navigate this pain by myself. So that brought me comfort. Matthew 5, 4 says this, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Psalm 119, 76 says this, May your unfailing love be my comfort according to your promises, according to your promises to your servant. Isaiah 66, 13 says this, As a mother comforts her child, so will I, so will I comfort you, God says. You will be comforted. Hebrews 13, 5 says this, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. You know, and just as God showed me and opened up my eyes to show me that in the middle of the darkest night, the darkest nights of my soul, he was there to comfort me. He promises you the same thing. So if you are going through a hard time right now, if you've gone through a hard time, and as you will go through a hard time, I want to tell you this, that God's promise in the middle of it is that he will be the God of all comfort. And I may not know why, and you may not even know why you're going through it. It may not even be fair. It may not be because of something that you've gone through or that you've done, pardon me. But God promises that as you're going through it, he sympathizes with you. He understands and he cries over your pain. And he is familiar with your pain. And he, he desires and he longs to be the God of all comfort to you. And then often when we go through trials and tribulation, we turn to all these different things. You know, we turn to food, we turn to TV, um, we turn to all these different things to bring, up, bring us comfort. But the God of all comfort wants to bring you comfort this morning, this evening, this night, this whatever it is. And he wants us to turn our affection to him. And he is not the author of confusion. He is not the author of your pain. But in the middle of it, he wants to, he wants to help you navigate this. And he wants to bring you comfort. And, and he is asking, would you allow me to comfort you in this season? Would you turn your attention to me? You know, 
know? And if you say yes, as simple as just saying, God, you know what? Here I am. Tell me where you are and what you are saying in this. You know, just as you did for Pastor Samuel, where are you? I'm crying and I know that your word says, and you say, God, that, you know, you catch all my tears in the bottle. God, you're familiar. You record all of my troubles, God. I need to feel your presence right now. I need to feel your comfort right now. It's as simple as praying that. So let me pray for you as we go. So Father God, just as you, you did for me, God, and you, you, you showed up um, as the God of all comfort in my time of pain. God, I ask, Lord, that you would do so for my church family, for everyone that is listening to me right now and that is in need of the God of all comfort. God, that you would comfort their places of pain, that you would be the God of all comfort. God, that, that you would be the God who stands with them, Lord, that they, they would feel your, in your embrace, Father, as they navigate this time of troubles, of trials, of tribulations, God. In the name of the Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Have a fantastic day, everyone. And please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Peace out.